Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to see how we can train a custom YOLO world model. So in one of the previous videos, we already went over how we can run the model and so on, but now we're going to take a look at how we can train our own models. We're going to use a data set called LBIS. So it's basically just a large scale fine grained vocabulary data set. So normally when we train the YOLO world model, also the pre-trained ones from Autolytics, they're pre-trained on open vocabulary data set. So it's basically just a huge data set with up to 100,000 images and also a bunch of different classes. So it's not just 80 classes from the Koga data set, but these models and these data sets can be used for pre-training YOLO world models. So we're going to show you how we can set up that pipeline. You can also use your own custom data if you have smaller data sets that you want to fine tune the YOLO world models on. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go up inside the models tab, we'll be able to see all the models that we have available with Autolytics. So right now we're just going to go down to YOLO world. There we go. First of all, we can read a short description about it, like get an overview and also the key features, but this is again, just an open vocabulary model. So it's able to detect an arbitrary number of objects. You can even prompt it and so on. But in this video here, I'm going to show you how we can either like train a YOLO world model from scratch. So basically like random initialized weights or how you can use your own custom data set to go in and fine tune these models for your specific task. So right now, if you just scroll a bit further down, we can see the awaitable models, support a task and also the operating modes. So first of all here, let's just go in and use the YOLO world two models. So now we both have a version one and also a version two. We can see the different tasks which are supported. So we can both do inference, validation, training, and also export, but we can only do export with YOLO world two model. So definitely just go with that one. So we also have all the variations. So we have the small, medium, large, and extra large model. So we're gonna choose which of those we want. If we scroll a bit further down, we can then see the zero shot transfer on the Coco dataset. So that's also like a large scale dataset, which we normally pre-train the standard YOLO models on. But now we act like on open vocabulary and large scale dataset with an, a bunch of different classes. So we can have like hundreds, if not thousands of classes in these models. I'm going to show you how we can take another data set and fine tune it or even like train that from scratch. It will just require a lot of training time. So we can see some music examples here. This is everything that we have to do. I'm going to do this locally because it's going to take a long time. The data that we're going to use, which I'm going to show you in just a second, has 100,000 images in the training set. You can see here how you can train it predict and also do validation. You can also go in and export and so on. We have code snippets for all of it. Take it directly, copy paste it either into a Google Colab notebook or directly into your local environment and you're good to go. You don't have to write any code at all. You can just use the Autolytics framework and you just have to specify a couple of lines of code or directly in the command line. And then you can go in and train the models directly. So we want to really go more into details with this. Let's now go inside the data sets and let's take a look at the data set that we want to use. So if we scroll a bit further down, we can then see for the update detection data set, we have this LVIS data set. So if you just press on it, we can go in and see that this is a large scale fine grained vocabulary level annotation data set, and it is released by Facebook AI research. So this is basically just a research benchmark for update detection and also instant segmentation, but we are only going to specify and work with the update detection data set. So here we can just see that it is a large vocabulary of categories aiming to drive further advancement in computer vision field. So I'm basically just going to call it Elvis here. So it contains 160,000 images and 2 million instance annotations, both for object detection, segmentation, and captioning task. We can see that we have over 1200 object categories. So instead of just having like the standard objects like cars, bicycles, animals, and so on from the Coco data set where we only have 80 classes, now we can go in and train these models on 1200 classes that could directly go in and use those for our own applications and projects as pre-trained models. So right now we can just see the key features. We won't really go too much into details with that, but we have the data set structure. I'm going to extract the information and so on. I'm going to show you like how we can just run the YAML file with Autolytics and it's going to extract and unzip everything, take care of it, and you can train it directly. So we have a training split, validation split. We also have a mini validation split and a test set here at the end. So if we scroll a bit further down, we'll be able to see the data set YAML file with all the different classes that we're going to do detections on and also the path to our train validation and our mini validation split. And this is pretty much everything that we need. If we just want to use it directly and train our model, we can see the example usage, YOLO train. We also need to specify detection or segmentation. 
and we say the data set path here equal to elvis.yaml. Then it's just going to pull the data sets from Autolytics here and you can, you can use it directly and I'm going to do that in just a second. So it's around 20 gigabytes, it's over 100,000 images, so it takes a long time to actually go in and unzip and so on. So I'm just going to let it run in just a second so we can use it for training later on. So if you're using like these large scale data sets, like definitely do it locally if you have a GPU and so on, but you can still do it in Google Colab Notebook, but you will most likely just go in and fine tune it using a Google Colab Notebook with a few hundred images to a few thousand. So you can pretty much just see all the classes here. We have alarm clock, airplane, apple, apple sauce, apricot, apron, scroll through all of them, ball, basketball, instead of just like sports ball, which we have in the Coco data set, beach ball, battery, bed, cow, and so on. So we pretty much just have any class that you can come up with here in your data set. So most likely, if you want to use a model directly out of the box, a pre-trained model, and you don't want to find your own data set, you can definitely go in and use these open vocabulary data sets. If you just go a bit further down, let's go, just go down and verify. Yes, we have 1,203 classes. This is how you can go and download if you want to download directly from code. This is how you can download the labels and also download the data. But if you just use it directly with Autolytics, it's going to extract all the folders, the whole data structure, and it's going to run the training directly, or if you want to use it for predictions later on. Here we can see some sample images and also annotations. So it's basically just a ton of different images, both for instant segmentation, optic detection, and so on. Open vocabulary, we have 1200 classes. So that's pretty much it. Let's now go in and see how we can train this model if we just go inside a Google Colab notebook. So first of all here, we just need to pip install Autolytics. Then we need to create an instance of the YOLO world class. We just need to specify which of the YOLO models and also the YOLO world version two. Now we have the model. Now we can just go down and specify that we want to train it and which of the data set that we want to train it on. And right now we just need to specify elvis.yaml, the number of epochs, image sizes, and we also have a bunch of other arguments for a training script here that you can go in and set based on the Autolytics documentation. You can also run it directly in the command line. So you can just call yolo detect train, specify the data path here, so elvis, if it's not able to find that on your own local computer, it's going to pull it from the Autolytics registry where we just have all the data sets in there. So it will take a long time with this specific data set here, but if you use RoboFlow, if you use conversion tool and so on to generate this YAML file just for a few hundred images, you can do it perfectly fine in here and it will only take a few seconds to extract. So right now I won't do it here in Google Colab Notebook. It will just take too long. So I'm going to do it locally on my own computer. So right now let's just go in here and run it. And then I'm going to do it on my local computer. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to run the training because it will take like several hours to do the whole training when we're talking about like 100,000 images that we need to process. So I have an RTX 4090 on my own computer and we're going to see the training results, go over it epoch for epoch so we can see how we can train these YOLO world model on a large scale data set. And it doesn't even have to be large scale, you can do it on your own images and data set as well. So first of all, we just pip install Autolytics, we create an instance of the model, we train it and we don't have to run the last line down here at the bottom because it's going to do the exact same thing in here. So for epochs, we can also specify the batch size and so on, but we're just going to go with the default ones for now because we, we are only interested in seeing the data set structure and then we're going to do it locally. So if we just take a look at the data set locally while it's running in here in Google Colab, so right now we just have data sets and we have Elvis, we have the annotation images and also labels. So if I go inside the images, we have test, train and validation. And if we just go inside the validation set, we can see that we have 5,000 images for the mini validation and these are all the images and we have all the labels for the images and this is only the validation set with 5k images. So if you just scroll through it, you can see there's a bunch of variations, like a bunch of different types of images, bunch of different objects and so on. So this is a really good data set to pre-train a model on. So normally when you have such a huge data set, you just train the model from scratch, but it will probably just take too long to convert. So I'm also just going to fine tune it just to be able to run it like for 10, 20 epochs. So it doesn't take like multiple days to train on my own single 4090 GPU. So right now we can see that it just unzips. So to start with, it's going to download the model directly if you're running this for the first time. So right now here we can see that it's missing the path. So it can recognize this YAML file locally, or at least in your environment right now. So it's going to extract all of that from Autolytics. So we see that it's unzipping from datasets, Elvis label segments into this directory. 
and we can go over and see to the left. So we have our data sets, we have our Elvis, and then we have our annotations, labels, and we're also going to have our images later on. So this is such a huge data set and it will take very long to go in and extract in Google Colab. It probably took me around like 20 minutes locally on my own computer, but let's now go in and see how we can set it up and also run training directly on our own local environment. So while it's just unzipping the whole data set in here, let's just go in and open up a new terminal. I'm just going to use Anaconda prompt. Right now we can just go down and take this command directly, throw it in here after we have pip installed autolytics locally on our own environment. So this is not a Google Colab notebook. This is on my own computer. And if I just delete all of this and verify that we have a GPU attached to it, we can call NVIDIA SMI. There we go. And we should get all the information about our GPU. 24 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. So we're good to go. And we can just copy paste this command in. We don't want to run it for too long. So let's just go down and act like run it for 30 epochs. And we're going to just going to like let it run. And then we're going to come back and take a look at the results epoch per epoch. The image size here, we can also specify the batch size and so on, but let's just go with the default parameters. So when we run it locally, we don't need the explanation mark that is only in a Google Colab notebook. So right now it's just going to extract the whole data set. So the training images, we can see that is extracting all the images here. It's going pretty, pretty fast, but we also need to extract 100,000 images and we can see the track bar over here or the progress bar. So right now is around 20%. It's going to take the training and also the validation set. After it's done extracting all the images and loading it into the system, it is going to start the training for the 30 epoch that we have specified. And then we can just lock the metrics over time take a look at the losses and also the mean error positions, see how our model converges. And then we're just going to let it run and come back and take a look at the results because this is going to take a long time to process. It'll probably take several hours to be able to train this model. And this is still just on a fine tuned model. If you were to train it from scratch, it will probably take multiple days for a model to be able to converge. So we can do meaningful predictions with our new YOLO world model that we have trained from scratch on a large scale data set. So this is also how you take a model from scratch and create these pre-trained models, which we have with YOLO 5, YOLO 8, YOLO world, and so on. So right now we can see that our training and validation set has been extracted. We can also see that we have our optimizer set up. Image size is 640 for the train and also validation. We're using eight data load workers and we're also locking the results to run the tech train, starting training for third epochs. And now we can go in and track epoch per epoch, the whole training process. So right now we can see epoch one out of 30, the box loss, class loss, DFL loss, and also our instances. We'll also get the mean average position and so on. But right now we can see here that it has processed 500 batches out of 6,000 for single epoch. So that's a lot of data that we need to process for every single epoch. So right now let's just let it run for some hours and we can go back and take a look at the training results after that. So our model is now done training. Let's go down and take a look at the epochs and the results. So right now we have just trained for 10 epochs and we should definitely have trained it for longer, but it will take like several days to train either a model from scratch or just fine tuning this on the pre-trained YOLO world model. So we're going to take a look at the metrics epoch per epoch. We both have all the losses. We also have the mean error position of 0.50 and also the mean error position 0.50 to 0.95. And these are pretty much the values that we should look at. The average position should be increasing and the losses should be decreasing over the number of epochs. If you just go a bit further down, we can then see that the mean error position, which we have here, is just increasing over time. We start out at around 0 0.028, and then we end off after 10 epochs at 0 0.0764. So that's pretty good. Our mean error positions are increasing, and we can also see that our losses is decreasing significantly, at least here in the start, which is also expected. So we definitely need to train this model for longer. We can see that the 10 epochs completed in three hours. If we were to actually like train a model, we can see that it hasn't even converged yet. It is not near that, but if you want to train this model fully, we'll have to run it for probably several days. So right now the mean error position is around like 0 0.07 and we could probably expect it to be up in the 0.40 ranges for this specific data set. After it's done training, it will also go in and do evaluation with all the classes and so on. So we can see the individual classes, how does the model perform on those? And this is not really too meaningful, but you can dive into some of the classes if you have some specific ones that you want to take a look at. 
or you can go inside the runs folder, take a look at the confusion matrix, but we have videos about covering like the whole runs folder, all the results that it's going to generate after we have trained a world model with Ultralytics. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you'll learn a ton, basically just to see how we can train a YOLO world model, both on a large scale data set, but you can also do the exact same thing with your own custom data with a few hundred images. So definitely go in, test it out. It is really nice to learn how you can set up the whole training pipeline and test out these open vocabulary models where we can do pretty much the object detection on an arbitrary object instead of only the 80 classes from the Coco data set. So thanks a lot for watching again and I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.